Bumcast. You're getting checked in. That's right. Although we're, we don't have a tournament this yeah. weekend once so, again. So. No checking in, but um, yeah. you know, hey, we're still going to be here for you. That's right. We didn't have a tournament last weekend. Nope. I Not this one this weekend. And, How was that? Yeah. That means indoor. Mm. Yeah. It is well, what it is. I wouldn't have been playing volleyball anyways this weekend. I was battling food poisoning all weekend. Ooh. Yeah. Unfortunate. But you know what? We're feeling better. Hey, as long as we're feeling better, that's all that matters. Yeah, I guess. that's all that matters. But we got a couple tournaments coming up, not this weekend, but in the future. Guess what is this weekend? What is this weekend? My brother's getting married. Uh, yes. Yeah. Adam Daniel is getting married. I'm excited for that. It should be a um, fun time spent with friends. He's not marrying himself. He's, He's marrying not. Abby. Hello, Abby. Yeah. Congrats on getting married. Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll also be there. Oh, I'll see you there. Yep. So it'll be, yeah, that'll be a good time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we still had some questions uh, to, to answer. And then we also got two more questions. Uh, someone commented on our, what's, the, or no, I will about to say what's the call on it's our It's not bumps what's cast. the call. Yeah, what's the call? That's football. Golly. Yeah, volleyball. It's fine. I didn't want to touch it. Cause no, because it, it's it a little fall. loose right there. But she's, she's stable. Okay. Yeah. So hit me with a question. Okay. So we're going to answer Epic Joy Volleyball's second question. What do you think of the NCAA no double on the second contact rule? Great question. So no personally, comment. I'm, yeah. <laughs> no comment. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I don't really get it. Like, cause wouldn't you like want to not double the ball anyways? Because if you don't double it, you're obviously putting it where you want to put it. But also like, other than like women's professional, but they're not calling. I mean, they're gonna call doubles everywhere else. Like outdoor, they're gonna call it. So it's like you're only not calling it a women's indoor. So that's not gonna correlate to the girls that play both sides. But anyway, that's just me. I don't really get it. But yeah, it it doesn't. As of right now, it doesn't affect outdoor, which I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I don't want it to come into the outdoor world. Uh, I think that it is a an acquired skill that a lot of people have worked for. And I think it is a part of the game that people need to have. So like as you move up divisions, the setting gets better. The ball placement off of a set gets better. So that's part of the separation. in some of these divisions is strictly the hands of the players, at least in the outdoor world. Um, I know a lot of people say that, you know, it's a subjective call. And I would say my argument somewhat to that is, Look at all the other sports. There's subjective calls in every single sports, and you don't see the NBA getting rid of the charge call. Mm-hmm. You don't see, I mean, just even even the common foul call. Did yeah. he touch him? Did he not touch him? I've gotten called for so many fouls where I've made a clean play on the ball, and the ref said, well, it looked like you touched him. Well, I didn't. Yeah, it looked what? like whatever. Yeah, it looked like a double. Yeah. It's not a double. I get it. It. It's gonna change the game and the you know the NCAA level. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't affect the game in the sense of players and coaches aren't gonna work on hands. Yeah, I just don't want to see it become this sloppy sport where they're just you know whacking at the ball, sending it to wherever. I saw a bunch of uh, TikToks. Yeah, me too. Me middles too. are just saying, "Oh, I can set now," pushing the setter out of the way, and they're using their. And they're just. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't come to that kind of game because then I think the NCAA could potentially regret making that decision. Um, I think that, I mean, it's just, I don't see the point because, like, you should want to be able, like, if you don't double the ball, the ball's going to go where you want it to go. For the most part, yeah. For the most part. Yeah, like, it's going like to go where you want it to go. So it's just, I, I don't have, know. We'll see how it plays out. Because I have been known to dabble in some sloppy hands and getting that ball to go right where I wanted to go in the outdoor world. But, well, you know, that might be you, but every time the wind, I double the, wind the ball, may be helping. I don't double. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't double. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got you got any uh, any other responses? Obviously, this is a huge topic, huge debate going on all over podcasts, social media. I've seen it everywhere. But everybody's talking about it. I mean. What are you gonna do? They made the rule. Yeah, we can't change it. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm excited to see how it's gonna play out, but yeah. we'll see. That's all. That's all we, we can really we, say. We will see, and still still learn how to set a ball. Yes, that's that's please. a good good quality and volleyball trait to have. Uh, you got another question? Yeah, I do. Uh, Harrison Kerr asks: Sandbagging. 
How do you define it, and is it a problem? Sandbagging. So sandbagging, we define it as in you're where you're not belonging. Yeah, if you are playing in a division where you do not belong, then you're a sandbagger. Yeah. Sorry. You just are. Um, but, like, I mean, you see it, like, people joke around a lot at tournaments. It's like, oh, you're sandbagging. But a lot of it also has to do with who your partner is, too. Mm -hmm. uh, like, let's just throw it out there. Like, I mean, if you're a, gu if you're a good guy or, like, like, if you're a good guy, say you're an open-level guy and you're trying to play in men's, but you can't find a partner and you play, so let's say you play with a girl. Like, you're allowed to drop down mm -hmm. a division. And, like, you're not sandbagging or you're playing with a guy who's new to the sport. Like, you're allowed to drop down a division. Like, so you're not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to stay in the division where you belong. It also depends on who your partner is. But whenever you are playing with, like, another guy that belongs in that, like, if you're two open guys and you're playing in double A, you're a sandbagger. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, I will say, especially from, like, a tournament director's standpoint, life is so much easier when players play with somewhat equal level talents. So like, if like you and I played together, we could go we could go play in double A. We could go play, we could technically go play in open. Are we going to win? Probably not, because mm -hmm. neither one of us are a big block or anything. But you got these players who do a good thing, I should say, sometimes, and they play with someone who's new to the game, they could potentially be playing double A open, but they play with someone who's double B level and they go play an A and it does ruffle some feathers. Um, we get a lot of questions. Hey, can you come check out this team? It looks like they might be sandbagging. Obviously, we don't want to ruin anybody's day. We want everybody to come out and have fun because ultimately that's what this game's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a fun environment around a competitive sport and we're trying to grow it. So 100%. sandbagging can be one of those things that takes away from that. Uh, we define sandbagging from a logistical standpoint in the sense of how each player ranks themselves. So there is a format that, uh, I'm not going to say it off the top of my head, but there is a format out there um, that most tournaments post where if you're a double A player and I'm an A level guy, you're supposed to play up. If it's co-ed and... You know, the guy is an A player and the girl's a double B player. It's supposed to play up. So there's ways to match and there's a formula to kind of technically match who you're supposed to be with and what division you're supposed to be in. But ultimately, there's really no good way to, uh, I guess, like monitor that and enforce the sandbagging policies other than subjectiveness of the tournament director. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, obviously, like, you're going to go out to tournaments, and if you see somebody sandbagging, you're going to be like, oh, you're sandbagging. But, like, you never really know what's going on. They could be fighting an injury. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, they could be playing with somebody that's new. So, it's like, it's it can be a problem, especially at bigger tournaments. Like, you go to, like, Pottstown. Or, like, it. I mean, it can happen at Even the Clash. Even what you're wearing, the yeah, Clash, yeah. It happens at the Clash. It does. It, at those bigger tournaments, it, um, you know, it happens. But it's just, it's so hard to monitor and keep, keep a like i don't really know what the word is but keep it's control just hard to yeah keep of the control people. of but you know it is what it is it will all, it's always going to be a problem yeah there like, will always be sandbagging and my only suggestion is basically what we were told whenever we were coming up win is yeah if you win you move up if you're competing might might go ahead and just pull the trigger and move up i do understand that you know a lot of people though they don't want to move up into a division that they're either new to, possibly uncomfortable with, maybe don't they don't have the right partnership to go play in a higher division and sense of like a blocker, defender type thing. It could be two defenders, could be two blockers, whatever it is. Um, also, I'll, that keeps some people down in other divisions. But ultimately, you know, we were told as we were coming through the ranks that, hey, it's time for you to move up, get you one win, go ahead and make the jump. Or um, don't even get the one win. Yeah, just, just go ahead the and make jump. the jump. If you're trying to be competitive in the sport, go go play at a higher level. Like just just go ahead and make the jump. It is, it is what it is. Uh, it'll make you better playing better players. Um, you may not get a win. You know your first five six year of a tournament whatever, but if you're trying to get better at the sport, play in a higher division. 
test yourself. And then if you got to drop down, drop down. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's just one of those things. Sandbagging is probably always going to be in the sport and you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. It happens. It happens. Yeah. So we had a person comment on our last Bumpscast video, episode three, I believe. We're okay. on episode four now. Uh, the Victor with a K. Hello, Victor with us, a K. Yeah, he asked us two questions. The first one he asked is, how have you dealt with injuries? An example, back, ankles, shoulders. How, how have you dealt with any any injuries you've had, I'm assuming, in the sport of volleyball? Okay. So I haven't gotten hurt playing volleyball yet um but i have had issues arise from past sports from like while playing volleyball so mm-hmm. my biggest one has been my knees uh from playing football <laughs> got them weak knees oh yeah and um i know a lot of people at tournaments make fun of me for always talking about how my knees hurt uh because i'm so young but i have just always dealt with knee problems and um one way that i have all the jumping in volleyball has really like, I guess, inflammated my problems and they've come back. So what I've been doing a lot is I've been doing a lot of, you know, stretching and then I've been doing a lot of like isometric holds for those. Um, also just like focusing on the muscles around whatever's bothering you. So it's like, if it's your ankle, I mean, doing ankle mobility stuff, if it's, but like, especially I know a lot of volleyball players have like shoulder problems and knee problems. So it's like, working on the muscles that surround that help a lot. So like, that's like Nick Chubb. Like every, I don't know if everyone saw Nick Chubb's scary injury this past season, but it's like he only tore his MCL. I think Mm -hmm. when it looks like he destroyed his entire knee because he worked on all the muscles around his knee so much that his muscles kept everything intact. So it's like the more you work on everything around your uh, what's bothering you and the more you work on the tendons like the tendon strength and all that and stretch stretching is always important um, the better uh, the better off you're gonna be so yeah I can I can agree and attest to a lot of that too I've had what feels like almost every injury in the book and yeah. you've gotten hurt yeah playing all the sports mm-hmm. volleyball basketball football football track track yeah chin splints suck I actually pulled part of my uh, hip flexors. Oh, I uh, pulled each one in two different seasons. That's tough. It is tough. It's happened. Um, but yeah, injuries injuries are a part of the game, and I always tell people, yeah, if I'm not injured, then I'm probably not playing anything. So I can look down at my hands. I got a crooked toe from playing barefoot in the grass, and you know my body was going one way. That toe decided to go the other way. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, one blade. That's all it takes. Yeah. One blade. And it was a strong blade. It was. It got me. But, um, yeah, coming off of my most recent injury from not playing volleyball but basketball, and it's been down in the ankle region, and it's been one of the biggest injuries to try to overcome. But like you said, it's taking the time to nurse your injury. Of course. And by stretching, rehabbing, getting in the gym – and then ultimately not getting frustrated. Like to me, injuries are very frustrating. And if it, if you let that injury slow you down to the point of not wanting to get back involved in whatever sport you're playing, that's ultimately going to do more damage than trying to take care of it and push back towards something. Mm-hmm. So I've always found the faster I can get back, the better mentality I can stay and be in. Also, without you know trying to push whatever injury I'm in, I, I have a bad tendency of getting back into the sport a lot sooner than I need to, which yeah. could prolong some of uh, the injuries that I have, but I'm a go-getter, and I don't believe in getting hurt, even though I am hurt. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I just like yeah. to push through, but I don't suggest pushing through. Please uh, don't. Yeah, go, go see a doctor and listen to them. We got a bunch of friends who are in the PT, PA... All the peas, yeah. Some doctorates. We got we got a lot of friends. Some and, smart cookies. Yes. So we've got a lot of insight, and we have been some of their practice dummies. Mm. At least I have, probably more than you. Yeah, probably. But yeah, so rehabbing, um, trying not to get discouraged. Mentality is a big thing. Believing that you can overcome 
these injuries because a lot of big injuries in the shoulders, knees, any kind of big supporting role in your body, uh, it's hard to mentally overcome those. So having a good mentality, dealing with an injury is also a huge key into also everything else that you've said when it comes to rehabbing and -hmm. taking care of it. Yeah, 100%. And like a lot of these, like even if it's not like a big time injury, like when he got hurt playing basketball, like if it's just like, maybe it's just like a growing pain from like just overworking your joints and your, and your muscles. Uh, it's just like, it's not going to get any better unless you take the time to want to make it better. So it's like you wake up in the morning, stretch before you go to bed at night, stretch, stretch in the shower. I was about to say stretch in the shower. I stretch in the shower. And, um, but I mean, I had to, I had to start taking a turmeric, for my mm-hmm. knees, um, and turmeric's helped a good a good bit actually, and um, I mean it got so bad to the point where like I was having to use like Voltaren gel on my oh knees my and stuff like that because, but that was like while I was playing football, um, but it is a, uh, I mean it's not gonna get any better unless you unless you want to put forth the effort. That's right, you're gonna get out what you put in, of course. But uh, last question we got as of right now, from Victor with a K. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any serve receive tips? Serve receive tips. Um, my serve receive has sucked recently, yeah. just because like we haven't played outdoor. But I, it's one thing I've been really wanting to put like a focus into. Um, I mean, really, just watching the ball is the biggest thing, and like, don't be afraid to take a step back. Like I always find myself trying to catch the ball up here and like, I can't pass a ball like this <laughs> to save my life. And like, it is what it is. Um, but like taking a step back on serve receive and watching the ball come in, like if it's a short serve, the majority of people that play the sport of volleyball are always going to be fast enough to go and pick up a short serve. Um, it's just be ready to move, but like keep an eye on the ball. If you watch the ball come into your platform, the pass is it's going to get better instead of just like trying to like wave your arm into it. Watch it come into your platform. Um, that's yeah, that's all I got. What about you? Yeah, uh, one of my biggest things, and this is also trickling down from the Casey Patterson. Uh, I got to talk to him at a pro event, and that is one of the biggest tips that he gave is eye contact with the ball off of your platform. It's like any other racket sport, any other club, bat, you're swinging a baseball bat, softball bat, you watch the ball come off the bat. You're swinging a golf club, your eyes are to the ball, watching the club head hit the ball, and then you don't you don't take your eyes off of the ball until the ball's basically already gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with tennis, ping pong, pickleball, all the sports that you could possibly hit a ball with something you're watching that ball make the contact with whatever it is you are hitting it with. So in this case, we use our arms, our hands to play the sport. So I'm passing. I'm, like you said, watching the ball come off of my platform. And if I angle and guide that ball to where I want it to go, it's going to go where I want it to go. Yeah. Especially if I watch it. Mm -hmm. My brother tells me all the time when he watches me play, he knows it's a good pass if I look at the ball. Mm Mm-hmm. He says, I can tell you're passing good because you'll literally have your head down in your arms and like you can just, I can literally see you watching the ball hit your platform. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably concentrating because I probably shanked the four balls that you yeah. didn't see. And you're going to, and you're going to shank some balls. It's, it is it's what happen. it happens. And Even the best players in the world, we see it. Oh, a hundred percent. I, yeah. Pro tour. You see, you see people shank balls. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happens, but got to go back to the basics. Oh yeah. Got to go back. It's just, I mean, get your feet. Get your feet to the ball. Shuffle. Don't don't like cross your feet over. Shuffle to the ball. Watch it hit your platform and uh, aim the ball towards the middle of the court. Like you don't want to like if you if you're I mean it doesn't matter what side you're on, but you don't want to pass it straight forward because that's going to make your partner have to run all the way to the pin. Unless you're running plays. Unless you're running plays. <laughs> but the majority of the time, if you're not running a play, you want to pass it the middle of the court. Um, that way your setter has way more time to get to the ball and. But real focus on getting you a good set. So yeah, and we we also try, or at least I personally try to always stay low. Use my I like to use my lower body more to pass than my arms. I don't like to swing my arms because that also adds in a whole other factor as to where that ball could end up going. And then I like to try to get my shoulders and hips behind the ball 
if at all possible, so that way I can be square to where I'm passing. And then don't be afraid to go to the ground. So many people are afraid to get down in the ground. Uh, they're afraid to drop a knee. They're afraid to get their, literally, if it's sand, they're afraid to get sandy. If it's grass, they're afraid to get cut up. I've got cuts all over my body. I get sand all down my pants. The more you get cut up and dirty, the more you just get used to it. So it's like, yes. you just got to got to toughen up. It's like we play barefoot and it's like my first tournament, my feet got tore up. And like the first oh, yeah. tournament of the season, your feet get tore up. But like afterwards, they're used to it. Yeah, I'll let you go ahead and tell them what's on the top of my feet right now. This dude's it's... got one like cut blister on every single one of his knuckles on yeah. his toes. That's from two weeks ago. <laughs> That's tough. We're healing. We're healing. Yeah, it's all good. But yeah, I'd say, you know, watching the ball come off your platform, staying low, not being afraid to go all the way to the ground to really secure a good pass and serve receive. Because that's the first thing. If you can side out in volleyball, that's half the game right there. 100%. You are guaranteeing yourself a point off the easiest thing of receiving a ball. You know it's coming. So focusing that first pass, and if you can get a great first pass, you're setting yourself up for a lot more opportunities yeah. rather than your partner running across the court, chasing down a shanked ball, being out of system. Focusing that first pass is very key. And then another big thing, taking a deep breath mm -hmm. and releasing before you see the serve. Yeah, Making sure you're relaxed. You don't want to be stiff. You don't want to be intense. Taking a deep breath, calming down, relaxing, chilling out, so that way you can focus on that ball. And then start to read. Watch the server. See where they're, they're contacting the ball, where they're following through. A lot of times, those shoulders, those hips, their approach is going to show you and tell you a story, and that story normally ends up being where that ball is coming. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and going back to what you were saying about being able to side out, I mean, statistically, you're not going to be able to side out 100% of the time, but the team, like, if you side out 100% of the time, you will win. Like, that's, yeah. just the, that's just the way it works, and... um. That should be your main goal is like the and it starts with the pass. So uh the serve receive the pass is honestly the most important thing. Uh if you because I mean bad pass is gonna lead to a bad set, which is gonna lead to a add a system hit. Mm -hmm. So it's like it all it all comes down to that pass. So just focus up on that one pass and just let everything else come into play and you'll you'll be fine. Yeah, I I can I can agree. But Again, yeah, if y'all got any questions... Please let us know. Yeah, let us know. We love love answering them, love talking about them, because we're also firm believers in the more you talk about it, the more it's in your mind, the more you can start to become who you want to be in a volleyball player, and you can start to do those things. So the more you go talk about serve receiving, hey, you might be become a better serve receiver just by talking about how to actually do it. And then go check out some other videos. There's plenty of tutorials out there, but always... Send us your questions, regardless of what it is, volleyball related, personal related, or if you just want to ask a random question, go ahead. We'll, yeah, please. We'll, we'll answer, answer everything. It. Yeah. But I think I think that's all I got. Yeah. I mean, if you are a volleyball player in the South Carolina area, even outside, uh, we got a tournament coming up here yeah, soon. Yeah, March 16th and 17th. So please sign up. I think we the got The madness a of March. Oh, Yeah. We have a video coming out soon explaining how to sign up. It's on Facebook right now. Facebook right now explaining how to use Volleyball Life. That's the new like AVP software. Yes. So please go watch that if you're confused on how to sign up and sign up. We'd love yeah. to see you there, really. I can't wait to see you there. Yeah, We're and, going to see you there. Yeah, we are. And so please sign up. Uh, we, we're looking forward to it, and it should, be, it should be a good weekend. That's right. But as always, this was The Bums cast and you just got checked in we'll see you